Najib Razak appeared to indulge in a little bit of vanity before court began today. In a Facebook post, he shared a screenshot of a media article which used a very generic photo of him and asked his followers if that photo was okay. Instead, he suggested pictures with a more flattering pose and accompanied those with images of himself leaning over a desk while talking on the phone. By the Malaysian Insight, this is The People vs. Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. Najib seemed like he was in a good mood today. Dressed in a brown suit and a striped orange tie, he was greeted at court by a handful of supporters. They accompanied the former Prime Minister to the fifth floor courtroom where his SRC international trial is being heard. Former SRC director and the prosecution's 42nd witness, Subo, was back on the stand for a third day. Just as proceedings began, the defence encountered some technical difficulties with the projector, the same one Shafi had used yesterday to scrutinise every pen stroke of Subo's signatures. Najib went to wait outside and made himself comfortable at the benches at the common area. Ten minutes later, court resumed and Subo made his way slowly to the witness stand with the help of his cane. Najib went into the dock where his two pillows were waiting. Shafi, picking up where he left off yesterday, was still harping on Subo's signatures, which he said were distinctly different. He suggested that perhaps Nick Faisal had forged the witness's hand. Yesterday, the lawyer had asked Subo to provide 20 sample signatures on blank pieces of paper. This morning, he laid those signatures on SRC's instruction letters to Ambank to show the difference. Let's hear more from Ray. Shafi was scrutinising Renta's forms, forms for electronic transfers. These documents had both hard and soft or scanned copies. What Shafi was suggesting was that Subo's signatures on the hard copies were freehand forgeries because they looked different from his actual signature. He then moved on to the signatures on the scanned copies, which he said seemed like it was lifted and pasted on. There were 11 documents that had the exact same signatures. Subo said that because of his age and the stroke he had suffered, he cannot possibly remember or recognise every document he has ever signed. Shafi didn't buy it. The lawyer compared that reasoning to not remembering one's own daughter. Shafi asked Subo why he admitted that the hard copy signatures were his when it was clearly not, still going on the argument that they were forged. Subo said maybe they were forged, but he was never put in a situation where he had to admit to something like that. Najib in the dock was alternating between looking at his lawyer's demonstration and looking down at his phone. He also propped his arm up on the dock from time to time. At one point, he was approached by a supporter and he turned around to shake hands with him. Court then took a short break to allow officials to retrieve Subo's MACC statement from 2015 and 2018. The short break turned into an hour-long delay. Najib and his aides took this opportunity to go down to the basement cafeteria for a cup of coffee. There, he obliged some requests for selfies. Once he had his fix, he went back up to the fifth floor to wait at the public area, chatting with supporters and talking on the phone. When court resumed, Prosecutor Sitam apologised to Judge Nazlan for the delay. The prosecution submitted that Subo should only read excerpts from his 2015 statement. The defence disagreed and they argued over this for a good 20 minutes. Judge Naslan asked Subo if he needed the entire statement or just the excerpt to refresh his memory. Subo's answer was that he needed a break, eliciting laughter in the courtroom. He then told the judge seriously that the excerpt would suffice. 
Court then broke for lunch. Najib was whisked away in his black sedan. After lunch, Subo had already looked over the excerpts of his MACC statement. Here's Ray to tell us what happened. MACC first took Subo's statement in Abu Dhabi in 2015. In this statement, Subo said he didn't have time to examine the Renta statements, but nonetheless agreed that the signatures were his. Then in 2018, when his statement was recorded again, the MACC showed him 13 Renta statements. These showed money moving from SRC to its subsidiary Gandingan Mentari and to its CSR partner Esam Perdana. He told MACC then that the signatures weren't his and he didn't remember signing those forms. Subo added he didn't know how his signature was used without his knowledge. Shafi then brought up three other Rentas transfers from SRC to Putra Perdana, a company allegedly linked to Joe Lo. Subo again said that he didn't sign those forms. Subo also told the court he found out, through his son while he was in Jakarta on holiday, that he was on a travel ban. He left for Jakarta on May 9, 2018, right after voting in GE14. He then decided to call the MACC and cooperated with them so he could come home. Najib was slouched over as usual, watching the cross-examination. It was then Harvey's turn to question the witness. He asked Subo about his experience with companies owned by MOF Incorporated. He replied that he had none, but, he said, he had attended a company management course. Harvey then questioned the witness about Najib's status as advisor emeritus to SRC. Subo said that SRC's board did not appoint him as the advisor. They had never written to him for advice, nor did the board have any meetings with him. He said Najib never advised them directly. The witness said that former CEO Nick Faisal acted as a proxy. He would have meetings with Najib and the board would make decisions based on the outcomes of those meetings. Subo said Nick Faisal was emboldened to make decisions for the company because he had a mountain behind him. While Subo was giving his answers, Harvey cut him off, and this prompted Prosecutor Sitam to protest. The judge agreed that the witness should be allowed to speak, which he will when court resumes at 9am tomorrow. This podcast is produced, written and mixed by Revati Supramaniam, Yappik Kwan, Yvonne Lim and Ravin Palanisami. Additional reporting by Timothy Acharyam and Bede Hong. I'm Patrick Teo.